with Dr. Darren Hudson of Texas Tech University. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Well, tell us what's going on with the Cotton Economics Research Institute. Ah, we're, uh, we're having a good time. There's a lot of different research questions coming up. Uh, uh, we've got uh, the typical uh, price situation, which is uh, always exciting these days. Uh, and we're in the process of doing what we call the global baseline. So we look out uh, over the next 10 years, try to look at what uh, is going on around the world and, and what the impacts are on, on U.S. producers. Now, how have you been focusing on the dwindling water supply? Uh, we look at uh, a variety of different things, policy issues related to uh, water, and then how those uh, policy issues will affect uh, farm profitability and uh, cropping choices of producers in the region. What do producers have to be looking forward to in that area? Uh, well, you know, we, we've, uh, we've got to the 50-50 rule at this point. We still don't have any implementation plans on how to uh, move forward with that. Uh, but economically speaking, you know, the, the pumping costs are going to be rising as, as fuel costs rise, which is going to affect the sort of the economic decisions that they have to make uh, and the crops that they can afford to put water on. Uh, so it's, it, it's going to change some things over probably the next 15 to 20 years. Can you talk a little bit about what you'll be speaking about at the TAWC Field Day coming up next week? Uh, I'll be talking about the grain market and cotton market outlooks, uh, sort of both in the short term and, and the longer term. Uh, hopefully, so producers get a little idea what prices may look like, contracting opportunities, uh, and so they can make better decisions this spring. Now, we're seeing some crazy prices out there. What do you think that producers has, have to look forward to with their contracts? Um, well, yeah, prices are insane. Um, at this point, there's a big differential between sort of the current uh, March delivery contract and December delivery contract. Um, you know, they, they're going to have to look carefully at what the terms of those contracts are, uh, what their delivery requirements are, and then what if it's a price or a basis type contract. Um, you know, the price, I think, at this point is a little high where it might be in, in October. So if you've got a good contracting opportunity, it might be a good time to take it. But, you know, it's, uh, the, it's anybody's guess where we're at right now. We're in uncharted territory. Now, obviously, it's been pretty dry out there. And if this trend continues, how will that affect producers on the high plains when these prices are, are skyrocketing? Uh, well, it's, it's kind of a disad, uh, disadvantaged situation here because, uh, you know, especially on the dry land side, if we don't get some moisture, uh, it's really going to limit uh, the crop. And so uh, that's, that's going to keep prices high, but it's also going to mean uh, lower yields for those people. Um, for irrigated producers, it, it's going to mean they're going to have to spend more money on that crop uh, in terms of pumping uh, than maybe they did last year because of the good rain. So weather's going to affect profitability definitely, and hopefully uh, we'll get enough moisture to get a crop in the ground and, and get it out uh, so that they can take advantage of these prices. Now let's talk about cotton across the globe. Obviously the flooding in Australia didn't help. What other things were a factor? Uh, well, you know, we had the floods in Pakistan, which wiped out their crop, and then we had the floods in Australia that, that have uh, uh, hurt their crop uh, tremendously. So uh, those two factors are, are pretty big in the export market um, because those two supplied a lot of cotton into the export markets. And that's why we see the really high prices at this point in the year. Uh, going forward, you know, we're looking at those weather patterns to see what, what takes place. And to some extent, we're looking at what happens in Brazil. Because grain prices are pretty high, it's, uh, it, they're still in competition for that same land. And, uh, and so cotton production can, can expand rapidly in Brazil. But uh, if grain prices stay high, it may mitigate some of the growth in cotton acres there. So this year going forward, uh, you know, it's a weather thing. Uh, obviously, if we get good weather, we're, we're in good shape. Uh, and then it'll be prices of these other commodities. Now, consumers are feeling the pinch in their pocket when it comes to clothing prices. How much of that is correlated with production agriculture? Um, it, there's, there's, a, there's a significant pass-through. The early increases we've seen in clothing prices have been primarily because uh, expectations on, because those things are ordered, you know, six months in advance. So it was still when cotton was pretty cheap. But going forward, I mean, a lot of, of apparel manufacturers are talking about 20 and 30 percent price increases. Um, you know, there's a lot of manufacturers that are holding their breath, hoping if they can stay around that dollar cotton, it'll be, um, um, it, it'll work for them. But, but otherwise, they're going to have to blend more polyester in and, and things like that in order to keep the prices down. Uh, as much as possible. So there's a lot of changes probably going to go forward in the next year or two in terms of the fiber that you're going to be able to buy at the store. 
So there's still a lot of unknowns here on the high plains before we can look at the cotton market. Exactly. There's a lot of unknowns out there that, that we're still uh, facing. And hopefully we'll, some of those will resolve themselves in the next couple of months. Uh, Weather-wise, we'll see some things, uh, planting intentions, how many additional acres we're going to get. So those things will hopefully resolve themselves and give producers a little better idea going into planting. Mm -hmm.